Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to give an introduction to groups. So let's get started. Well, what is a group? A group is a combination of two things. It's a set. So for example, we can take the set of integers, which is all of the whole numbers, together with a binary operation. Uh, now a binary operation is a function that goes from the Cartesian product of that set with itself and back into the same set. What that means is we have a function that takes in two numbers from the set of integers, combines them in some way, and spits out another number that is an integer. And that all sounds a bit complicated, but it's not. And actually, I'm going to give you an example of a binary operation that you've been using since you first started school. 2 plus 5 equals 7. This is a binary operation. It has two whole numbers on the left, it combines them in some way, and produces a whole number on the right. We could write it another way, we could say, the function takes in the pair of numbers 2 and 5, and then produces the number 7. So addition is a binary operation, but because we use this binary operation so often, we've come up with a shorthand way of writing it. So to form a group, we need a set and a binary operation that works on that set. You can think of a binary operation as being a sort of relationship between elements of that set. Normally what a function does is it relates elements from one set to another, but a binary operation gives you some way of combining elements in the set you're thinking about and then producing another element in that same set. So it's some sort of relationship between the elements in a set, rather than a relationship between elements in different sets. But actually the binary operation has to follow some special rules before we're allowed to call these two things together a group. So let's see what those special rules are. We can write the combination of the set and the binary operation inside brackets. So here we've written the set z, comma, and then the plus symbol to represent the binary operation of addition. The first property that the binary operation needs is something called closure, but really closure just means that a binary operation is a binary operation. What it means is that my binary operation here, addition, applied on the whole numbers 2 and 5, needs to return another whole number. It requires that the set I'm taking my inputs from is the same as the set I'm producing my outputs to. So because I'm taking 2 and 5 from the set of integers, that means they're whole numbers. And so when I add them together, I need to produce another whole number. That's a number that's also in the set of integers. And because binary operations always go from the Cartesian product of a set with itself back into that same set, then this must be true for a binary operation. I think the reason why it's specified is because sometimes you have a binary operation in mind that doesn't actually apply to the set you're trying to combine it with. So for example, if we have addition and a new set, a set A, where a is only the whole numbers from 0 to 5, then if we try and add 2 and 5 together, in the ordinary way, we're going to get back 7, but 7 is not a member of a. So if we wanted to create a group using the set a with a kind of addition, we're going to need to redefine what exactly we mean by addition. While this is really the first condition you have to check, all it's really saying is that your binary operation is actually a binary operation that works with the set you're trying to create a group from. So let's look at the next condition. This condition relates to the order in which binary operations are applied. So if we wanted to add 2, 5 and 3 together, we can't do it all at the same time because our binary operation only knows how to work with two inputs at a time. So it can only add two things together at a time. There's more than one way we can do it. We can add 2 and 5 together to produce 7 and then add 3 to the 7 to get 10. Or we could add 5 and 3 together to get 8 and then add 2 to 8 to get 10 again. And what we can see is that it doesn't matter the order in which I add these elements up, the sum of all three of them is always going to be equal to 10. And that's the condition we want our binary operation to obey. We can write this down in one line by using brackets. So this expression simply means that we add 2 and 5 together first, because they're inside the brackets, and then we add 3 to their sum, or we can add 5 and 3 together first, because they're in the brackets, and then add 2 to that sum. And because we know with addition that these two things are equal, then we know that the second property that a binary operation has to have to form a group is true, and that property is called associativity. The third property we need our group to have is that there is an identity element contained in the set. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, it means that I want to find an element of the integers where if I add it to any number, I simply get that same number back. So for example, if we look at the number 3, I want 3 plus something is equal to 3. Now it's clear that in our case that something is just the number 0, and 0 is in the set of integers. So 3 plus 0 equals 3, 0 plus any number is equal to that same number again, so 4 plus 0 equals 4, 
5 plus 0 equals 5, and so 0 is what's called the identity element of the group. And when we're defining our group, we need to make sure our group does contain an identity element. And finally, for every element in the set, we need to have an inverse element. That means that if I add these two numbers together, an element and its inverse, the result is going to be the identity element. So in the case of our group, the identity element is 0. So for example, we need to find something that if I add to 4, I get back 0. Well again, that's quite easy in our case, because if we add minus 4 to 4, then we're going to get back 0. And we can see it's the same for every element in the group. If I add minus 5 to 5, I get back 0. If I add minus 6 to 6, I get back 0. And so you can see that every element in our set has an inverse. And this is the fourth property that we need. So if our set and binary operation have these four properties, then we can call a pair of them a group. So because these are all true, our combination of the integers and addition is a group. Often you'll hear someone saying that integers under addition is a group. It just means that the integers together with the binary operation of addition is a group. I'm not sure whether this gives the impression that it's easy to form a group, so I'm going to give you a problem that involves a set and a binary operation that do not form a group. And I want you to tell me which of these conditions is false. We're going to stick with the same set, the set of the integers, but the binary operation is going to be multiplication. So firstly we need to check, is the group closed? If I multiply two whole numbers together, do I get back a whole number? Well in the example I've written 2 times 5 equals 10, it seems to work for that example, are there any cases where it doesn't work? Is this always true no matter what numbers I use? Secondly, we need to check for associativity. Does the order in which I make the multiplication matter? Thirdly, I need to find if this pair has an identity. The identity should be an element where if I multiply it with something, I get back that same thing. So, for example, with 3, 3 times what is equal to 3? Is there an element in the integers where that's true? And is it true for every number, not just 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on? Finally, does every element in the set have an inverse? So in this case, we want to find some number where, for example, 4 times that number equals the identity element. But again, it's not just for 4, it's going to be 6 times what equals the identity element, 5 times what equals the identity element. And for each number, we need to have this inverse. So is that true of our pair, the set of integers and multiplication? I've already said that this doesn't form a group. So at least one of these conditions is false. My question is, which one is it?